Hello again. Uh, we're almost there. The last step is upon us. The, uh, oh, before I finish the stumble itself, uh, here's the stem. And it's just a matter of, of perfectly ordinary sanding and, and shining it up. Uh, in this case, I took advantage of the fact that the stumble had to be refinished anyway to go ahead and level the uh, junction of the stem and the uh, shank a bit. Uh, didn't have to mask it and play the, the usual games to keep uh, the surfaces in alignment. I also uh, faced the sh end of the shank just a little bit. It was slightly off. You could see some daylight in there, so uh, faced that. Uh, everything looks good. Uh, I think it's going to turn out well. Now remember, we have a very early production, 1972, earliest known production, uh, Red Bark, which is a it's a fair guess that that's this is what Dunhill intended. This is the way they thought it should look. And it's got the 120 shape number, which means it preceded the official beginning of the Red Bark it, uh, line. So this is one of the earliest ones. Fair guess that's what they want. It certainly is more attractive than this pinkish flamingo thing. So this is what we're going to shoot for. Now this, of course, is slightly dark, darker rather than it was on the day it was made uh, because it's been smoked. But so is this one. This isn't dead new either. So if we put some artificial age on it, so to speak, uh, no harm done. We're not trying to make it look new. We're just trying to make it look better. So anyway, now using this as the target means that you go through your uh, stains and your uh, uh, colors and decide what's going to work best. Uh, I've got a, a pipe making friend who supplies me with uh, briar chips when they uh, pipe makers fabricate a stumble. The guys who do grain alignment that pay attention to the grain alignment find that the easiest way to do that before they mount it in their lathe is to saw the block. They change the angle of the side a little bit. and they, In other words, they take thin slices off the sides and the, and the bottom and sometimes the top of those blocks and just throw them in a basket or burn them for all I know. But in any event, this gentleman uh, saves these things for me, basically, because I do so much stain testing. And if you know any pipe makers, they can supply you with uh, oodles and gobs of these at no cost to themselves. They're, there's not much you can do with them. Maybe you could make a tamper out of some of them, that kind of a thing, but mostly they're scrap. But you definitely want to test your stains on real briar and uh, it, the, get the colors to match the way. You, and again, this time, a color match isn't really critical. There are times, however, when uh, dead-on color matches everything, but we're kind of living large here today. So anyway, it turns out that uh, color tones cherry red is a pretty good match. It's a little, actually, a little bit more opaque, a little more uh, dense. So we'll dilute it slightly, not a whole lot. And that'll be the undercoat. We want to get the uh, the bare wood up to the same approximate color as the rest of it before we go any farther to keep the uh, uh, everything looking even. Now, it's easy to overdo. Notice this pipe, a tan shell. There's a dark area here, and it's lighter here, and darker here, and that having gradations of shading is actually part of what gives them depth and personality and and so on. So don't uh, go to extremes to get something like this uniform, but we definitely don't want to just have some color and some dead wood before we do our final finish. That would look uh, odd. Uh, another thing before we begin, uh, it's normal to use the stem as a handle so that you can uh, manipulate 
this without getting your hand covered with the uh, stain. If you've got a logo of some kind and it's a finished stem, your best bet for future savings of effort, cover anything that might be like a stamp or a, a inlay. Because if that gets stain on it, then you're back to sanding and you've, you're, you're backing up having to redo work unnecessarily. Because you will get some stain on the black part of the, of the uh, stem. And even in wiping that off with a, a alcohol and a tissue, if you drag just one time across pure white, you're going to get a pink dot. And then it'll you can sand it away, but it doesn't go very deep. But why do it at all if, if throwing some tape on there saves you all that effort? So, all righty. What I'm going to do now then is uh, shoot a little of this cherry red into a cup doesn't take much this is a concentrate and add to it a small amount of alcohol so that we get the intensity uh, to match what's already on here now this looks uh, a little bleached out because I use the uh, uh, the 3M bristle brush on the entire pipe to get even texture but still we don't want to put darker blotches in the light spots and then we've uh, created an, another problem just a different one whoop a forest of tripods here okay so a little uh, alcohol and a Q-tip and we are off to the races I'm guessing without uh, looking at this any in any greater That's not the right phrase. I'm guessing that before we move on to the subsequent finishing steps that we're going to end up doing the entire pipe in red after putting a layer or two of red on the bald spots or the, the blonde areas. So I'm going to uh, pause the camera while I finish this up and then restart it. Uh, when I'm finished, for obvious reasons, you don't need to see this being done any more than you already have.